Good morning, family. Thank you once again for watching. Michelle will be ministering today. Welcome, CFC. We hope you are all well at home. Still praying for you every day. God bless you. Please send love from house to house. We want to congratulate Beverly Grace on her birthday this week. Bev, God bless you. We pray for a wonderful year. All of you had an anniversary celebrations. God bless you. And we keep you in our thoughts. Enjoy today's sermon. Hi, Community Family Church. We are so excited about this year's D4J 10 Days of Prayer. Lockdown has caused us to think beyond a single prayer room, and this year we will be doing things a little bit differently. We're going to be moving from one prayer room to hundreds of prayer hubs in homes. This year's D4J 10 Days of Prayer will be taking place from 20 to 30 May. And Community Family Church's assigned prayer day is on 28 May. As a church, we have 24 one-hour slots to fill. Claim your hour and sign up by visiting the event information link that was WhatsApp to you earlier this week. Or visit our Facebook page and access the event information link from there. Once you have claimed your one-hour prayer slot, please will you share the information to your personal Facebook page so that we can reach as many people as possible. As always, the D4J prayer room is a family-friendly prayer room and prayer guidelines will be made available for both adults and children closer to the time. This year, we're going to be praying through Acts 20 verse 20 and Isaiah 58 with a specific focus on verse 12. We cannot wait to be praying from house to house with you. Good morning, Community Family Church and everybody joining us on social media. It's such a joy and a privilege to be coming to your homes again this morning and to be ministering the word. We miss you deeply and we love you and thank you for all the messages. It's so wonderful to just make contact and stay in contact. So I hope that you can have a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord with us this morning again. My message to you this morning is created to bring God glory. You have been created to bring God glory. Now to hear it is one thing, but to say it with your own voice and your own lips, um, that's quite another thing. And the realization really sinks in when we say it with our lips. I have been created to bring God glory. Um, that's my purpose. And wow. It's not a bad deal at all. I have been created to bring God glory and everything that I do should shout the honor um, of God. It should showcase the, the goodness and the mercy and the loving kindness of the Father that we serve. Everything that we do should bring honor and glory to our God. So we cannot afford as Christians to give bad service um, and, and, and not deal with people um, according to the word of God, in a good way and above the table way. But um, what we do should always shout God's glory. We should showcase the world who Christ, to the world who Christ is. And um, that's the fruit of the Spirit that they will be able to see, showcasing who Christ is to the world. How do we, how we treat, treat each other? That brings glory to God. And that shows the word, the world, the attributes of Christ and um, the word teaches us that we should be imitators of Christ as we display Christ to the world. So I want to let you into our house this morning and um, the church knows or many of the people at church knows that I really really love snow globes so that's my private world that I disappear when I shake my snow globes. So when we go somewhere I always try and find a I like the glass ones. So I always try and find a glass snow globe wherever we travel. 
and friends also bring me snow globes when they travel to add to my collection. So I have one for one of mine here this morning. It's really pretty. So this one my sister brought me from Austria when she was visiting there. I've never been to Austria, but um, when you when I shake it and the slow snow slowly starts to trickle down to the bottom, it really um, becomes, it takes me to a world and it showcases something to me and this beautiful castle in Austria emerges um, 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 we, as the snow is disappearing to, and, and falling to the bottom and it's, it's a really beautiful scene and it makes me dream of faraway places and beautiful places in this world that God has created for us. So I always also have a load of snow globes that um, I have bought in places that we have traveled to and visited and um, that when I shake them or when I look at them then I remember um, the beautiful memories that we've created while we were there and how the beauty of the place that God has created for us to enjoy and just takes me to that world that showcases me that part of the world and um, some of my snow globes uh, somebody once said you oh, it's so beautiful and uh, she was referring to one of the globes that I bought while we were on holiday. My mom and my stepdad lives in Portugal. So while we were in Portugal. And um, the customs officials refused to let me take my snow globes through customs because um, they said it contained liquid. But they are so fragile, the glass snow globes, I couldn't put them in my, in, in my luggage. So I had to carry them on. And um, the, I was so upset with what they did, um, it was a long story, they cancelled our flights and we haven't had any sleep for 48 hours and eventually we were about to, to board this flight to rush to South Africa to be in time to do a wedding on the west coast so um, it was a lot of pressure and now they wanted to take my snow globes. The only gifts that I bought myself uh, in Portugal and, and Spain where we were in holiday in Europe so I just collapsed and I had a, my, my suitcase, my travel on luggage, luggage is pink. So I fell down on the steps right there where everybody had to walk through and, um, and I held onto my suitcase with my snow globes and I cried. So my family, they ran in different directions. The kids, they were still small, the kids, my mom, Chris, everybody ran away and left me right there with my luggage crying. So I was sitting crying. Um, with holding onto my suitcase and this poor customs official had no idea what to do with me and everybody um, had to walk past me to, to try and squeeze through to go through customs and eventually he called his supervisor who then really by that time just wanted to get rid of me and um, told me to just go take my gloves and just go through. So I said to the lady I cried for these so so they, they have memories, there's memories attached to these snow globes. So as they showcase this world or this part of the world to me, it brings back memories and or, or I dream of these places. And so that's my thing. You might have something else, but it's just an example of how something showcases. And we as Christians, we are pretty much the same. We showcase to the world who Christ is because we are carriers of Christ. So when people look at us and, and see us, do they want what we have? Do they desire what we've got? Does When they look at us, is that the God that they want to serve, the one that they see that we are reflecting in our everyday life? What we do now makes even more sense the importance of how important it is to to um, to showcase Christ and be a good reflection of who Christ is, being imitators of Christ to the world. Then, so in our conduct and our words, we showcase Him. So we can look at that in one Corinthians eleven verse one, and Paul says, "Imitate me, just as I also imitate Christ." And the, and in Ephesians five verse one to two. And says, therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave himself for us. An offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. So what we display in our everyday lives, our words and our conduct, does that give a 
a, a, a fragrant aroma, the word says, if that's something that the world would desire when they look at us, uh, we are not imitations, we are imitators, uniquely created. If you read Psalm 139, my favorite psalm in the Bible, you'll see that you were uniquely created. You are unique. So we might be imitators, but we're not imitations. Uh, we are imitators of the Most High God, mirroring Him, reflecting Him, and carriers of His attributes, the fruit of the Spirit. Let us know whose we are and who we are in Christ so that we can save this with Paul. Imitate me just as I imitate Christ. Let our lives reflect this. Let us not be timid. Let us be bold and let us be courageous. Because of the God that we serve, Christ in us, the hope of glory. Colossians 1.27 says, To whom God was pleased to make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you the hope of glory. So let us be real. No flaky, fakey, granola bar Christians. Let us walk the walk and let us talk the talk. There's more than enough people who talk the talk and don't walk the walk. But as Christians, let us talk the talk and walk the walk. Let us be doers. Scripture says, we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God in Romans 3.23. But the scripture also gives us the answer of how to fix it, the way out. Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. Hebrews 10, 10 verse 16 to 25 also speaks of boldness. Um, but what if we are going through a difficult time and you don't feel so bold, and you feel weak? And then we run into the arms of the, our loving Father, the one who catches us. We find rest in him, in him and he strengthens us and he raises us up. So let's read Isaiah 40 and turn to verse 31. Isaiah 40, 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. We find shelter in Christ. That is where we go. That is where we run to. As children of the Lord, He's the one who strengthens us and equips us for whatever it is that we'll find a face in life. So what are we? Are we turkeys or are we eagles? Turkeys muck around in the dirt. Um, eagles, they soar high up high. They have a much better vantage point. Where do we want to be? Do we want to muck around in the dirt? Do we want to act like ostriches and when things get tough, just bury our hands, heads in the sand and wish that it just disappears? It doesn't work like that. We have to rise up and be bold. We have to be courageous God, and find our strength in God to do what it is that we need to do. We have to face situations head on. So if, you are, if we are eagles, then let us fly. Let us lift up our heads and dump the junk. All those things that are tying you down and is burdensome to you, let us give those to Jesus, um, who will take care of our cares. The Bible says, cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. So dump the junk, the heavy load, and let us not attach our hearts to stuff and things in the world that weighs us down. Let us be managers of our stuff, not letting our stuff manage us um, and, and, and consume us and take, us, take over the place in our hearts that we should have for Christ. Who is the owner of your heart? Let us join our hearts to Christ and let us love him first. We've been married now for 32 years and I can say that I am not my husband's first love. Jesus is his first love and he's not my first love. Jesus is my first love and we would like it no other way. Our first love who owns our heart is Christ. Our identity is found in Christ. Our security is found in Christ. And everything else flows from that. So who are you? 1 Peter 2 verse 9 says, But you are a chosen genera generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own special people. 
that you may proclaim the praises of him who has called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. That is who you are. This is one of the scriptures that God also gave us when we planted the church and we still hold on to this scripture. It's identity crisis um, diverted. We know who we know who we are in Christ. We are his and our hearts belong to him and he loves us completely. So we, you, we have to know whose we are. Otherwise, it's very difficult to be bold and courageous. Don't let criticism make you stumble or trap you. Let it make you strong and let it make you courageous. If it's rubbish, then it doesn't deserve your time in any case. So dump the junk. Just let it go. Ignore it. It's not worth your time and it's not worth your tears. Do you know the truth of the situation? Does God know the truth of the situation? Then that settles it. You don't have to fight. You know and God knows and that's enough. We're going to stand before God one day. We're not going to stand before man. It's not your burden to carry other people's offenses. So don't give that time. That is a trap that the devil sets for us to carry other people's offenses. Deal with it and then move on. So I want to share something with you. Um, I always tell Chrissy, overshares a church. And it feels sometimes it just feels like we live in a fishbowl. But um, so I'm going to overshare a little bit today. For those of you who've been with us for many years, you'll remember this. This happened many years ago. But as you know, we are really very Afrikaans. So English is our second language and very second. So very Afrikaans. And then sometimes when we translate from Afrikaans to English, it doesn't work out so well for us. And it's, it's been the source of much laughs. Our English has been the source of much laughs and entertainment and great embarrassment to us. But we're okay. We, we carry on. So this happened many years ago. And Chris said in Afrikaans, Jy met jou verlede achter jou sit. In telling people to not let their past dictate their present and their future, but to, 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 to move on from it. And um, in direct, tra directly translating, Jy met jou verlede achter, sit, achter jou sit, leave your past behind is what he wanted to say. He said, you must put your past in your behind. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure if there's really something that I should share online, but um, it happened. So people in church still quote it to this day that when um, things have happened and people are, keep on dragging their past into their present and their future, then they would say, you must remember to put your past in your behind. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's just put that on a nice, but what I'm trying to say is, and I think he made the point very well that day, is that we have to move on. When people treat us badly, then we should actually reward their evil with good and really just puzzle our offenders. That is what the Bible teaches us. So 1 Peter 2 verse 13 to 25, so I'm going to read you quite a portion of scripture here. I love to share the word and, and um, let it minister to your heart. So it says, 1 Peter 2, 13 to 25. Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king as supreme or to the governors as to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praises of those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. As free, yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice, but as bond servants of God, honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, and honor the king. These are heavy words that takes a little bit of time to sink in. So you can go and read it for yourself, but I want to continue and just read you the last section as well. And the the subject head is submission to masters. It says, servants, be submissive to your masters with all fear, not only for the good and gentle, but also for the harsh, for this is commendable. If because of conscience toward God, one endures grief, suffering wrongfully, for what credit is it 
when you are beaten for your faults, you take it patiently. But when you do good and suffer, if you take it patiently, this is commendable before God. For to this you were called because Christ is, has also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. So we should be imitators of Christ. He's left us his example. Who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth. Who when he was reviled, did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously. Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we having died to sin, might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but have now returned from the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Let us do good, even if we don't feel like it, even if we don't feel that somebody else deserves it, let us do good. Christ died to bring us life. Let us show people and showcase the joy, it's a fruit of the Spirit of the Lord. Let us showcase that it is a wonderful, wonderful life to live for Christ and have Christ as our Savior. We should not walk around with sour faces like we were sucking on some lemons for, a lot, for an extended period of time. Who would want to serve a God like that, looking at Christians who are continuously angry and mad and sour and, and, and unhappy and Nobody wants that. Let us live a life that people want to imitate Christ when they see how we imitate Christ, that they want to be children, become children of God and live that life, that Christ-like life. Let us live a life that makes people desire to serve Christ when they see how we live and imitate Christ. When we give our hearts to Jesus, it's not the end. That is just the beginning. We have a life to live. Let's live our lives and enjoy it. Let us grow in Christ. Let us become saturated in his word. Colossians 1 verse 16 to 17 says, For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. And here it is, the theme of our message this morning. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have preeminence. We are created to bring God glory. It says all things were created through him and for him in verse 16. We were created to bring Him glory. Let us live our lives and bring God glory. Let us put Him first before all else. The young people today have a saying. They say that pe that person is the Bay, the B A E, be they before all else. Christ should be our before all else. This is just the beginning. So begin. See your life as a brand new book with many crisp white pages, a story not yet written, but a wonderful journey that awaits you. Become excited. Christ is so much in store for you. So let your journey begin with him. The Bible teaches us that knowledge can puff, of, puff us up. But when we apply knowledge, that is wisdom. So wisdom is the application of knowledge. It was never meant to make us look good. It was never meant um, to be used as a weapon or to demean others or make them feel insignificant or inferior. Wisdom is a tool to help us. It's something to help us and assist us um, to, to, to bring life to other people. When we apply and use knowledge, the knowledge God gives us, He'll also grow and multiply the wisdom in our lives. It was given for us, but it was also a gift given to us for others because Christ has people in mind. Read the word and spend time with God. Pray, become part of your church family. Find your place where you can serve the body of Christ. We together, 
globally, we are the body of Christ. Not one person is the body of Christ. One is the hand and the foot and the ear. But together, globally, we are the church. The Christian church is the body of Christ. In the same situation, God brings life. He is a life giver. He doesn't suck the life out of you. He brings life. He died to bring you life. He gives life to overflowing. So let us stand up and be counted in God's kingdom. Remember, we said, your identity is found in Christ. We read the scripture in 1 Peter 2 verse 9. Your identity is found in Christ. I'd like to share these scriptures with you quickly. It's found in Galatians 2 verse 20 and it says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Our identity is in Christ. John 15, 15, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you my friends. We are Christ's friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. Our identity is in Christ. Ephesians 2 verse 10, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And then in Philippians 3, 20 and 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, it says, But our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. That is who we are. Our circumstances do not define us. People do not define us. Our wealth or lack thereof, that does not define us. The Word of God, that defines us. And we've read these scriptures. Read it out loud when you're at home and say it so that your ears can hear it. The words is faith come by hearing and hearing the Word of God. Say it until you believe it. I know sometimes life is tough, tough and um, that's why it's called life. And the reason why we need faith without difficult situations, faith would be superfluous. We cannot please all the people all of the time. Neither do difficult times remain eternally. Tough times don't last. Tough people do. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 10 says, Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in the distresses for Christ's sake. Yo, that's rough. For when I'm weak... I'm strong. And this is the key. No matter how tough your situation, when you're weak, you're strong because you are a carrier of Christ. We have the better covenant, the better deal. Even at our lowest, even at our weakest, we are strong because Christ is in us, the hope of glory. You are Christ's original. You are his masterpiece. You showcased him to the last. You are bold. You are a royal priesthood, we read, a holy nation, and you are God's own special people, created to do good. You are wise, you are sanctified, your identity is in Christ. You are tough, you are strong, you are courageous, you are specially created to bring glory to God. All things were created for Him and through Him. Colossians 1 verse 16, we read, we are created for Him. We are created to bring Him glory. You are created to bring Him glory. I hope that this message has blessed your heart and that you see the value that Christ sees in you. This care, the special care that He took when He created you and the huge dreams that He, are dreaming for your, he is dreaming for your life. And I pray that this word will really mm, grow in your heart and that your mind will start to um, accept these words and, and understand and start to believe it so that you can start to live it. So I'm very excited and what a wonderful opportunity, what a miracle just to wake up every morning and, um, and it's a brand new day to live for Christ, a brand new day. Yesterday is behind us, Tomorrow is still uncertain, but today we have 24 hours today and we are going to do our best to live for Christ. Thank you so much, family, for spending this morning with us. We pray God's richest blessings over your life and um, we really pray that every word that you have heard will carry much seed in your life and that you'll see the value that you are, who you are in Christ, whose you are. 
and that your identity will be formed and found in Christ and that you will know that you know that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. So I'd love to pray for you. Dear Father God, thank you so much for this opportunity to spend time in your word together as a family again this morning. Thank you for the positivity in your words that even through our tough times, we can be courageous and strong because you live in us. You give us the power. You give us the knowledge. You give us the wisdom and you give us the strength just to live and have joy in our life in things but things that we do. God, I pray that we'll become a showcase to people for who you are, reflecting you well in our lives. Be carriers of you to the world and, and, and live a life that people would desire to follow you and serve you because you have loved us all first. Thank you for your love, your grace, your grace, your mercy. Thank you for the way that you protect us and that you guide us. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, family. I'm praying a very blessed week for all of you. Ik hoop dat jylle wonderlik en gesiende week sal hee. En um, stier vir ons een bykie foto's en boodskapies is so lekker om saam met jylle te keir. As jy nog nooit jou hart vir die Heere gegeet, die blijf nog 90 seconde saam met ons en bid die gebed wat op jou skerm kom geniet jylle week.